Hello everybody. It's minus five here today. We're definitely in our Irish winter. But of course it, it doesn't normally get very cold here at all. Our winters are actually quite mild. Even compared to England they're mild. Um, so we've got two 6LXs that have just arrived in the yard. So I was going to take you through them, um, outline our approach and discuss what the plan is going to be. So the first task we have to do is unwrap them. You'll see that they're they're fairly well they're fairly well secured in these pallets. I mean somebody's done a good job. They're fairly secure. I should just point out that normally whenever we're packaging our engines up, we put the straps right underneath the pallet not not through here right underneath because the pallet is actually stronger that way but what what these people have done is is fine okay these are obviously obviously marine engines <coughs> and they've come out quite a historic or quite a historic vessel and i'll uh, i'll take you through that at, at the end okay what do we look for uh, we were told that these engines were running a, a short time ago. Um, so the first thing we do is we operate the Strangley lever and we listen to hear, can we hear the rack going back and forward? And I can't hear it. In fact, I'd be fairly well confident that the rack is seized. So I get the screwdriver and go in here like this and try and move it. It's seized. Right, so that's uh, one uh, reason for some pessimism. Uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll try and see this should turn over. So we put a big socket on the front here, use this lever and give her a turn. Now there's a wee bit of movement there. Look, there's a wee bit. But She's not right. I mean, she should go right round through 360 or even 720 degrees. So there's something wrong there. She, I, I don't know. She could be hitting a valve. Somebody could have left a, a brick or something in the sump. I, I don't know. So we have all that there to sort out. Um, the starters are quite tired, as you can see. Um, somebody has been inventive, inventive with insulating tape here on this uh, backwater reel. And um, why there's a piece of timber jammed down there, I really don't know. Um, somebody has been inventive also here with the filler cap for the header tank. <laughs> Isn't that so funny? Now, why they've got two, I really don't know. This is the original one here, but the threads are largely gone on. It's not that critical because, as I've explained in the past, this is a low-pressure system, and, uh, and it's, it's, not, it's not critical. Um, you'll see that we've got a PRN gearbox on the back here, and uh, it's only oil cooler. We've got the original Gardner pressure gauges. I think they may, well, they may well clean up. They may well be okay. If not, we can put on new ones. She's rated, I can tell by the by the, the the plastic plate on here. She's rated at 1850. Okay, so this would lead me to believe um, that this may have been an automotive engine at one stage. Um, another clue is you can see here there's not an extended crankshaft. This is the short crankshaft here. So again, that's typical of an automotive engine. Uh, no harm, it's no harm. Uh, the sumps are both typically automotive, they're, they're alloy, but again, it's, it's, it's no, no big problem, no deal, no big deal. Okay, so our plan is that we will send these two engines off now and we will get them soda blasted. Well, first of all, we'll take off the injector pump, we'll take off anything that's critical, uh, we'll take off anything that's perishable, like the, the hoses at the back. Um, well, this is another point. Why is this gear on here? What's this gear here for? Again, this 
would lead me to believe that this could have been an automotive engine at one time because that's typical of a drive for driving a hydraulic uh, pump for 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 brakes or steering or whatever. So really quite interesting engines. They've got the horizontal air vessels, uh, which would be I would associate more with LXB rather than LX. We were told that these are LX engines, but the pumps would lead me to believe that they're actually LXB. Let's check that again. I'm having difficulty seeing it. Yeah, it's definitely a T50. And it's also interesting that they've got two air vessels. There's only a need for one on each pump top. There's actually two air vessels there. There's no need for that. There's only need for one. Okay, so we've got our work cut out for ourselves. At least we've uh, introduced it. Ah, there's one other point. Um, I was exp the engines are supposed to be a pair, so they should be identical, but they're they're not. You can see here if you look that this had at one stage got a reciprocating um, bilge pump on there, and it probably also had a reciprocating circulating pump, but they're they're gone. This one doesn't have. So. We're going to have a bit of research to do to see are these the original engine from this boat. Um, some information now on the boat itself. These engines have come out of an ex-Royal Naval uh, pinnacle called the Warrior. She was built in 1912 and deserves her name because she's seen action in both the First World War and the Second World War. See, she had steam engines, but... Um, these were replaced by um, these were replaced by Russell engines sometime in the past. The Gardeners were, were fitted in 1959, and there was no regret at all about that. You can read all about uh, the Warrior here. Um, okay, um, that's all I've got for you. Um, there's no point in going around the second engine in any detail because it's essentially the same as the first one, and. Uh, We'll take you on to the next stage, whenever they come back from the blasting. Thanks a lot.